crops. Sugar beets, wheat, soybeans. Children. We put an addition on about three years ago. And memories. I don't remember the old house really. Have been raised here at the Nipstad Farmstead. It's a Centennial Farm. This was the home of Jerome Nipstad's mother. I was born here. Jerome's father farmed this land, and years later, Jerome took over. And I moved in. <laughs> Jerome married his high school sweetheart, Sandy, making her a part of the history. We raised our family here. We, uh, Our son farms with us. Um, it's our grandson would be a fifth generation farmer here. 100 years. How old are those? Five generations. They're old. Threatened by one major project. They're destroying our way of living out here. And these floods are happening and they're happening more frequently. Kevin Campbell is a board member with the Flood Diversion Authority, okay. a group put together to ultimately come up with a plan that would protect the cities of Fargo and Moorhead from any catastrophic event. We don't want to make promises to them that we can't keep. The Diversion Authority, along with the Corps of Engineers, drafted a plan that would put the communities of Oxbow, Hickson and Bakke in the deep end. They would have to stand on their roofs to keep their heads above water. It's sort of like a, being hit by a drunk driver. It's a challenge because when you do this, you also know that you're, you are impacting people's lives. Everything you knew, everything you loved, everything you had changed in a minute. But the alternative is just overwhelming to even think of. I know you've heard it you know, from residents saying that they just don't feel like anybody's listening to them. We don't have all the answers for them right away. Uh, it, it's just basically the nature of that beast. You can't get together without talking about the negative impacts of what, how this is changing our lives. Mark Waltz built his home and shop here because of the country living lifestyle the area has to offer. Going to church with your neighbors, your kids are being confirmed with them. It, ju it just ruins everything. It, it's like an extended family. and. To lose that is, is just really sad. But Campbell says if a flood protection plan isn't put in place, Fargo and Moorhead could be underwater. There's so such potential for risk here in my mind. I would rather be wrong and have this diversion in place than to be right and not have the diversion in place. So you guys are doing your part and trying to save these communities that would be in harm's way. Absolutely. and and and. We con we're constantly thriving to reduce impacts wherever we can in whatever ways we can. The latest idea, a ring dike around the affected communities, built 12 feet high, an option that the board believes would keep those areas dry, but residents are saying no. There's no way that we want Fargo to flood. We just feel there's a, there's a better way to do it. Everybody's willing to hold some water back. I mean, why go to such an extreme? That's probably why I go to such an extreme and want to destroy so much. It's just the process that you have to go through, um, and it's, an, it's unfortunate for everybody. You know, we'll stop it somehow, you know, it's, it's you know, whether it's legal means or whatever. And no matter what, the Nipstad say they will fight to save the only piece of history their family knows. It affects our son and his son is who it affects. That's what we're fighting for. The Flood Diversion Authority is going to ask the Army Corps of Engineers to work with some residents south of Fargo on whether ring dikes should be built. Construction on the diversion could begin as soon as the spring of 2014 and is expected to take several years to complete. For more information on the FM diversion, just visit this story on our website where you'll find a link. Mike and Steph, 